Hi Inez, nice to have you. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. We'll get started in just a couple of moments. I actually started in the wrong spot. I was on my team group page, so I had to switch off and start again. So I'm a minute or so late. Hey, Andrea. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Kathy and Cecilia. Ladies, if you have not liked the page, that means you've clicked the like button, L-I-K-E, -E, in the header. And um, please also share this post as well as comment so I know you're watching. Hi, Amelia. Remember, if you um, comment, share and comment, then hi, Lisa, all the way from Wisconsin. Um, remember, if you comment so that I know you're here, comment any time throughout the video, um, you will be entered into a drawing to win tonight's cards. And yes, Andrea, I wish I was watching the Blue Jackets. Um, you'll have to keep me posted of the game because I got to work a little bit. Actually, I have to work a lot because I'm still getting ready for tomorrow's classes in uh, the Cincinnati area. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's get started. Um, tonight, I'm going to show you how to make a floating frame. Okay? And I'm going to feature the Tropical Sheet Stamp Set and its Coordinating Tropical Thinlets Dies. Hey, Tom. Hi, Kathy and Amelia. Um, so those are the featured products. These, I believe, will both be in the new catalog, which begins June 4th. However, its coordinating designer series paper will not be. And I am using some of this today. It's beautiful. And Granny Apple Green, Blushing Bride, Shaded Spruce is just gorgeous. And of course, it's got a coordinating cardstock pack if you want to buy that with it. And then finally, it also has tropical elements embellishments to coordinate with it as well. And those are up on page 199 of the current catalog. So I don't, I'm down to scraps. I've used this paper a lot, so I'm down to scraps. So don't really have much to show you in that way. Um, and I don't have a sample because I'm kind of going backwards today. Oh, what I do want to show you though, hi Marty is, and I hope you can see these well, I probably should have taken them out of the plastic, but these are, yes, Marty, I agree, Stampin' Up! does have the best designer series paper. Gorgeous, high quality, love it. Okay, so here are some more, um, some up close examples of the Tropical Escape designer series paper, which comes six by six in a six by six pack. And I believe you get 48 sheets for $11, so great value. These are from cards um, in one of my events last fall, I believe. Actually, maybe even last summer. Okay, and there you see those tropical embellishments. Okay. And pretty much all the same. Okay, so there you get, at least got a little taste of um, what the designer series paper is like, its colors, its bold prints, okay? And in addition to the Tropical Sheet Suite, I'm also using one of the rectangle stitched framelits, which is um, pretty new as of the Occasions catalog, and that is still available and is not retiring. But like I said, out of those products I just showed you, the Tropical Escape designer, se designer Series Paper is retiring. So if you like it and you want more of it or you haven't used it but it's been on your list, now is the time to purchase that, okay? Um, for cards, whoops. For the cards we're going to make now, I'm using Blushing Bride cardstock, okay? 
And this technique, you will actually make two cards. Hi, Carol. You'll actually get two cards making this technique. I have two pieces of designer series paper from Tropical Escape, and I'm using, using the Blushing Bride prints. And I have these cut four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So the si same size as a card front, okay? I know I'm glad you like it. I think it's beautiful too, okay? I've already stamped a couple of envelopes. And then I have also cut out several pieces using the framelits dies from the suite. I've gone ahead and cut out leaves, two kinds of leaves from the designer series paper. And then I stamped and cut out um, the flowers, okay? And these I'm going to be using to make my floating frame. Now you will need press and seal, okay? Hi Annette, you do need press and seal for this technique. Um, a regular, and it's because of the sticky side, a regular um, saran wrap, plastic wrap will not work. It has to be the press and seal, okay? And you'll see why in a few minutes. So I'm going to start with a piece of, and I'm going to lay it on a stamp and pierce mat just so you can see it better. I'm starting with a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inches, okay? And this is actually going to work out to be your scrap paper, but it is much needed. So again, the two pieces of designer series paper I cut and this scrap piece of cardstock, Whisper White cardstock, are four and a quarter by five and a half inches, the same side size as a card front, okay? Now, the key on here, and I'll show you a little bit later what I made and um, why it didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to, but I understand why now. But you're just going to basically fill the designer series paper, or I'm sorry, fill the whisper white. And some of these, you can see I cut, I was cutting from scraps too. So a few of them, the tops or edges are cut off. And I'll only use those if I really need to. Okay. But you're going to try to fill in as much of this as possible. However, you do want to leave you do want to leave some white spaces in there, okay? Which it, I didn't do quite right the first time. And you'll see, I, I start, still turned out with two, ended up with two great cards, um, but it didn't quite fully give the floating frame appearance, okay? But you know how that is when you try something new. You just try, try again. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I feel like I want one more here, but maybe it's too much. And you can see you just kind of play with it and the goal is to fill in a lot of that white space okay but you don't want to completely cover the white space now i'm going to add some flowers and i'm just going to continue to play with it a little bit until i feel like it's the way i want it And we're pretty much going to be using all parts of this. And you'll see how that works out. But definitely a fun new technique for technique for me that I'm kind of still perfecting and playing with. Okay, and I would say that's pretty good.
leafy then I want to change up these flowers a little bit. Maybe one towards the bottom as well. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stop there because when I made my first one, I kept going and going and going. And then when I got further into the project, I realized I really had um, too much on it. Okay, so I'm going to kind of try to refrain from do making the same mistake. Okay, but like I said, the, I'll show you the cards at the end. They're still fabulous, still love them but it just didn't quite get give the floating frame technique that I was trying for. It didn't give the look, I should say. It was the technique. It just didn't give the same look that I was going for. Okay, so I'd say that's pretty good. Now I'm going to take a piece of my press and seal. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Tracy and Robin. Thanks for sharing, Joyce Letterby. Others, if you haven't shared yet, I sure would appreciate if you would. And I'm just going to lay this down. Your things might move a wee bit, but that really is okay. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is basically take my snips. Where did I go? Right here. Isn't this cute little um, scissors charm? This was made by a friend and team member, um, Jenny Gilbert. So, kind of a nice way to just keep track of your paper snips. Okay. I'm going to press down the back side too. Okay. Now I'm just going to go along here and trim the excess off. Okay. When I say trim the excess off, you can see I'm cutting the designer series paper as well as the press and seal, all parts that go beyond the outside edges of my Whisper White cardstock. Okay. that move a little bit so let me press it back in place and I just need a little more trimming to do this is always a crazy time of year for Stampin' Up! demonstrators you know we're trying to uh, use up what we have let people know what's retiring so they can get things they want before they're gone but at the same time I just attended Stampin' Up! On Stage local in Charlotte last weekend. There were several around the country and the world. And um, so now I have a copy of the new catalog and all kinds of fun things. Oh, Andrea's tell keeping me up to date with the Blue Jackets score. Columbus Blue Jackets is Columbus National Hockey League. And... Um, Today is game four of the series, and Columbus is up three to zero. So we're hoping for a big night for our Blue Jackets. Okay, so now I'm going to use that framelit, the stitched rectangle framelit. I've got my big shot right here ready. Hi, Emily and Pat. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Mary Lou. Ladies, please share this Facebook Live. All you have to do is click your share button, and that invites other people to join in our creative adventure here. Okay. 
Okay, I'm just trying to get that pretty centered. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to cut that out and roll it back and forth. Okay, I, I always flip mine over to take a look and make sure that the cuts um, have definitely gone all the way through. They typically do, but sometimes some of them get missed. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this out. Okay, so there's basically my frame. I am going to be using this piece, but I'm going to set it aside for now, okay? Pat, thanks for sharing with your club ladies. I hope they can join in and get some inspiration from this demonstration. This might be something fun for you to do with your club ladies. Okay, so now I'm going to basically peel the Whisper White frame away. You might want to use that for another project. Okay, and again, I'll put it on here so you can see a little bit better. Now I'm looking at the back side. Here's the front. I'm looking at the back side. Here's the part that makes it a floating frame. You need to put dimensionals on all these pieces. And I am going to say that um, on this project, I'd say it's better to have more dimensionals than not enough. I know a lot of times we only need one or two, but on this, you definitely want to be sure that everything has dimensionals, okay? If they're large pieces, I would go ahead and put two on, like this one, okay? Um, and then, let me make sure I got everything, I think so. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and peel off the backings. You should see my floor, it is embarrassingly messy. It's always messy since I'm crafting so much, but this is ridiculous, I can hardly walk. And then I started pulling off stamp sets off my shelves that are retiring, and I don't know why I started that before I had everything else completed that I need to do. Okay, whoops. Okay, this is a little bit tricky. In fact, I probably should have not peeled them all off at once, but basically what you're trying to do and excuse my head if you're seeing the top of my head. You're trying to line up all of the edges with this piece of designer series paper. And remember, if you're gentle, you can pull these dimensionals up and reset things. I'm a little bit off. I don't get my top here. Okay. Don't fret if it's a little bit off. You're, it's still gonna work out, okay? Just do the best you can. As you can see, I'm having to pull some up. Just don't, you don't wanna press the dimensionals down really hard at first, okay? Because that allows you the ability to gently pull them up if you need to. This part is a little bit off. I'm looking to match up the edges here. And it's the bottom that's kind of where I'm kind of off. It's not going to make a huge difference, but if I can get it right on the edge, that's best. Okay, so now I've got that done. Okay. Now I am going to press so that the dimensionals stick in place. Now I want to very slowly, hi Jennifer and Karen. I love the color combination also. Hi Melissa. I see some new names out there. That is always exciting for me. Okay. 
And if there's little pieces like this, it's okay to just pick them up. No big deal. Okay, there's another little one. Okay, but you just want to carefully and gently pull them. Okay, so do you get the idea, the feeling of the floating frame here? Can you see that now? Okay, sort of like these pieces are floating in air. And I probably could have even left more space here. Okay. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it, just adhere it to my card front like that. Okay. Anybody else out there a hockey fan? Oh, I should say before I do that, if you have any edges you want to trim up, now is the time. Okay. Remember I told you it's a little bit tricky always matching up those edges exactly after you put the dimensionals on. I'm thinking too that this could be really a neat technique to use um, to put like in a frame maybe for a wedding or uh, make a floating frame for a baby picture or something like that and frame it and put it in the nursery. That makes me think of you Marty. I always see pictures of your little ones. They're precious and you are quite the crafty woman. And Marty does, isn't just good at paper crafting. She's good at lots of different crafts. Oh, Inez, Montreal Canadian fan. Okay. Oh, you bought the press and seal, Melissa. Yes, it's kind of this technique. It's kind of all the rage. Okay, so there it is. Um, actually, that would even be cute to frame itself. Put a little fold, photo in. Tammy, I'm so glad you're going to try this. Okay, I think we should add a sentiment. So how about I have you are the greatest and I'm going to stamp that with blushing bride ink. Okay. And I'm going to punch it out with this, I think. You know what? I'm going to do something different. I'm going to punch it with a circle instead. I think the two inch circle. I think one and three quarters is going to be a little bit too small. Sandy, Blue Jackets and Cincinnati Cyclones. Have you been watching the series? I was thinking about you and your husband thinking you might be watching. Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay. That was the one and three quarter inch punch I used. Okay. Oh, that would look darling with a picture in there, wouldn't it? Think about that. Your um, picture at the beach or something like that. Darling. Okay. But anyways, I'm going to put this on. I'm going to pop it up with just a couple of dimensionals. And because I want this circle to be in just the right spot and I don't want to miss by putting um, dimensionals in the wrong place. I kind of want to leave this open, okay, in case somebody does want to stick a photo in there. Or I want to stick a photo in there, okay? You are the greatest, okay? Now, you can use this as a photo. You could um, put your um, sentiment inside here. Okay, I'm gonna leave mine open for now. Um, wouldn't this be so cool um, to give to somebody that earns the Maui incentive trip? Stampin' Up! demonstrators, many of them, including me, are working towards earning that. I am more than halfway to my goal and I have till the end of September, so that's kind of exciting. But you could definitely put your sentiment there um, and you could also, pop up a flower like that. I think I'm gonna put one right here as well. What do you think? Or maybe I'll just put one on top of that. Give it a little more pop-up effect. Hi, Vicki. Okay, cute, isn't it? So are you getting the idea of the floating frame? Do you like it? 
show me some love. Thumbs up or hearts if you like that. Okay, now I did tell you that we would make two cards with this technique. Okay, so now I'm going to do the second one. Hi Kay. All right, I am going to pull up the press and seal from this Whisper White. I'll set that aside. I might want to use that on something later. Okay. And now I'm going to put dimensionals on the back here. All these pieces. Okay. You just want to make sure you have a dimensional on all of the individual pieces. There's a couple places here I think I might use the many dimensionals. Let me grab some of those. Here we go. That one and that one. I thought there was another one. No, oh, maybe those two. Okay. So now I'm going to, I want to put this down right here. Okay. I'm going to put it right in the center there. So I'm removing all the adhesive backings. Once again, the coordinating colors for the Tropical Escape Designer Series paper are Blushing Bride, Granny Apple Green, Shaded Spruce, there's a tiny bit of black in some of the prints, and then there is also um, Whisper White. Oh, that, does that look centered to you? Let me see. A lot of times I work standing up, so I'm looking over the very top of it. It's a little bit different for me working at this angle when I'm doing a live demonstration, but it's all good. I'll scoot it just a wee bit here. And again, just, just lift those dimensionals up gently and you'll get it. Okay, now I think I'm ready to pull the press and seal. Okay, and remember to start gently. And also instead of ripping up, pull along the paper. Okay, and just go very slowly. If there's any little pieces, like these little edges, no big deal. They're not necessary. Okay, now there you get an even, um, even more distinct look of the floating frame. Okay, maybe could have used a little something there, but I still think it's wonderful, okay? So how about if, once again, we add a sentiment. I think I'll just do the same one since it's out. You are the greatest. Would make a great thank you card. Okay. You are the greatest. Thank you so much for helping me. go I'll kind of go there here actually I think I'm gonna put it right here I like the way it pops on that dark green I'm just gonna use a couple of dimensionals okay just like that should I add another flower here? I can pop another one up. Hmm. I think I'll add one right there. Just another pop, not necessary. And <laughs> Marty, you've added press and seal to your Kroger list. Good for you. And keep it in your craft room. Don't put it in the pantry, keep it in the craft room. 
I also have um, um, wax paper or parchment paper I tend to have in my craft room as well. Those are good um, for using with very intricate thinlets or frames. Pop it like it's hot. <laughs> okay, and now I'm going to add it to my card base. Remember these pieces um, that I was working with are the same size as my card fronts, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Okay. Oh, this was fun. Okay, I really like this. What other stamp sets do you think would lend themselves to this te technique? Anybody? How about um, animal, animal, what is it, animal outing? Okay, really any of them that have um, some fairly um, distinct shapes and images, okay? Who's going to give this technique a try? Do you have a stamp set in mind that you're going to use? Okay. All right, so those are my two cards. Beauty Abounds, oh, that would be a good one. Press and Seal Challenge, Marty. We could do that, we could do that. Okay, I need to find a challenge coordinator for my team and even my customers. Are anybody, any of you out there um, interested in doing some kind of challenge on my VIP group? Okay, let me show you the examples I made earlier today, okay? Let's get some of this out of the way. So here's my two that we made tonight. This is what I made earlier, okay? Here was my first one, okay? It turned out pretty well, okay? Um, instead of using a rectangle, um, I used an oval. Oh, good luck to your Red Sox, Inez. Have a good night. I used an oval, okay? But as you can see here, I made a beautiful frame but it doesn't quite have the same floating impression, okay? It does somewhat, but not quite the same, okay? And I think the reason for that is I covered up too much of that first piece of cardstock that I used, okay? I think if you leave a little bit more space, you get a better sense of the floating frame. Nothing wrong with the frame I made. It's just not so much of the floating image um, that I was going for, okay? And on this one, I um, used the same leaves, but instead of stamping the flowers in Blushing Bride, I stamped them in Flirty Flamingo, okay? So it's real bright against just kind of pretty and subtle, okay? All right, those, that is technique for today, and those are the cards. Um, be sure and comment. I'll be drawing names to send out a couple of cards. Um, one to probably a couple of you. And final reminder, um, the retiring list is out as of yesterday. I have not looked at it today, and I will say um, I sent another, if you're not already on my newsletter list, let me know and I can add you to my email list, but I sent out a follow-up to the email I sent out yesterday. And the reason is yesterday's list that we got from Stampin' Up was a little bit confusing because it appeared that every single stamp set was retiring. That is not the case. What is happening is Stampin' Up! is retiring the wood slash clear mount red rubber stamps. We will, we're completely, pretty much completely phasing out wood. Um, 
all of those that are carrying over. So basically anything that is carrying over into the new catalog, if it's available in wood or clear mount now, it will actually be called cling, a cling red rubber stamp. Okay. Um, so please, it, it may seem misleading. Um, and that's not intended. It's that they need to retire product numbers because they're changing the format of those stickers or the labels on the red rubber stamps to the cling. So they, when I say cling, they cling very, very well to our um, acrylic blocks. Um, no trouble with them falling off at all. Um, so in the next catalog, you'll see that some stamp sets will be offered in cling, which is our red rubber, and you'll use the acrylic um, blocks to mount them, or they'll be offered in photopolymer, which are the stamps that you can completely see through, and those also you mount onto the acrylic blocks, okay? So if there's any question, um, please let me know. I did add a revised, li revised list. Stampin' Up! will be updating that list regularly so that we know when products sell out, okay? And um, please know that everything on that retiring list is on a while supplies last basis, or they'll be gone um, June 4th when the new catalog starts, whichever comes first. Many times, those product, some of those products do sell out quickly, especially the in-color products, which include the colors Powder Pink, Berry Burst, Fresh Fig, Lemon Lime Twist, and Tranquil Tide. Those five colors are, are retiring, so everything in those colors, whether it be inks, ink pads, refills, cardstock, embellishments, ribbons, all of that will go. If you want any of it, please get it now before it's gone and it's too late, okay? Another thing that sells tends to sell out quickly is designer series papers, alrighty? And keep in mind that the Big Shot and all its accessories are retiring. Stampin' Up! is in um, negotiations with another manufacturer. Um, to create some kind of die cutting and embossing machine for us. That being said, all of the old Stampin' Up! framelit dies, thinlet dies, edgelet dies, embossing folders, um, as well as the new ones that are being manufactured can be used with your Big Shot or any die cutting machine, okay? So we are definitely not getting rid of our framelits and thinlets. I'm going to continue using my Big Shot until we have a new die cutting machine, an embossing machine. So you will still see it in my classes and in my demonstrations, okay? I wanna give a shout out to my niece, Avery. She turned 16 on Sunday and today she got her driver's license and she actually just lives 10 minutes from my house in Westerville. So I'm hoping that very soon she'll get to take a solo ride over to my house to see me and it'll just be fun. Okay, any questions? Okay, Kay, I hope you're able to go back and um, view the beginning of this video. As soon as I'm finished, I will share it to this site. Okay, I always share my Facebook Lives to this 